Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Lancaster County Board of Commissioners meeting uh, for Tuesday, January 30th. Uh, I'm Todd Wilchin. I am the chair of the county board this year uh, for introduction purposes. Um, my fellow commissioners on my left are uh, Bill Avery and Deb Shore. On my right, um, fellow commissioners uh, Roma Amundsen and uh, vice chair uh, Jennifer Brinkman. Um, we also this morning have with us two junior commissioners and I'll let them introduce themselves. Ella. Please. My name's Coco. Okay. Great. Glad you were able to join us this morning. Um, also, um, from the county attorney's office, we have Jennifer Holloway. Um, from the county clerk's office, we have the county clerk, Dan Nolte, and Kelly Lundgren. Um, from the county board office, we have the chief administrative officer, Carrie Egan. Now, if everyone would please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Clerk, would you please start the agenda? Gino. Copy of the Nebraska Opening Meetings Act is located on the wall at the rear of the hearing room. Additionally, a copy of all written material to be discussed at today's open meeting is available from the county clerk's staff at the front of the hearing room. The material can also be viewed on the county's website at lancaster.ne.gov. Agenda item one or minutes. Approval of the minutes of the Board of Commissioners meeting held on Tuesday, January 23rd, 2018. Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the minutes from the last board meeting. Uh, any discussion or corrections? Hearing none, please call the roll. Avery? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries 5 to 0. Number 2 reclaims approval of all claims process through January 30th, 2018. Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve all the claims processed through today. Um, any discussion? Please call the roll. Brinkman? Yes. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Avery? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries <laughs> 5 to 0. Number 3 are special presentations. Recognition of the County City Building Art Exhibit, Daryl Gramenstein. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Um, I was selected to uh, display art and the photography out in the Grand Hall out there. And they asked me to come up and give a little presentation on, on what I do. I brought an example of one of the, one of the <clears throat> works that's going to be uh, gracing the offices next door here at the end of the month and so forth. Um, basically, the concept I have out there, all the pictures out there are from Lancaster County out there. And uh, I spend a lot of time out in the country and within the city, um, just kind of driving around, looking at things, and uh, uh, have a certain vision of things uh, in my head, uh, how I'm going to photograph them. Um, like this was just this taking the vi viaduct um, over O Street, walking up there. And uh, um, the way I, I do stuff like this, I don't know if you guys have uh, I've seen this one out there. Um, that is a series of, uh, I think it was 12 different shots put together, different uh, exposures, <clears throat> and then all, com all combined in a certain way and changed to black and white, and everything like that. Um, Sunken Gardens is another, I have noticed I did a lot of shooting out there, kind of the same, same example out there. Um, just kind of, it's kind of nice just to drive around inside their city and our county and just kind of share my vision of things out, uh, out there. Um, different techniques and different eyes and, and, and so forth out there. Um, I was very honored when Liz Shea, I don't know if you, you got on with Liz, um, told me I was selected for, the, for this ex exhibition for three months. Um, she's been nothing but wonderful in it and a very helpful person and, and this whole process and everything. Um, I am very, very pleased. I, I'm, I'm, several images are going to be in the council offices in here, including the capital picture. And then I'm uh, going to let the stadium picture out there uh, be on display in there for a couple, period of months in there as well, too. Um, do you guys have any questions or any comments on anything out there? Or, uh, well, I, I have a question because 
I mean, I think the, the medium that you're using, it, it looks like a painting, but you're saying it's actually a photo? Yeah, these are all photographs. It's just um, <coughs> the technique I use is, is called bracketing, and one of the rules typically of bracketing is you have to have the camera on a tripod, not moving perfectly still. Um, a lot of the images I do, I actually do, do this handheld. Um, it just gives a little bit of movement where um, the things closer up look photographic as you get further away from the camera and the focal length. It just gives it just a little bit of a little vibration, a little, little movement to it where it appears more painting-like mm -hmm. in there. Okay. And that's the uh, majority of the stuff, that's the way I do it. It's not the way you're supposed to do it, but I've found over time kind of breaking the rules sometimes is mm -hmm. uh, kind of works out for me in, in the end. There's some things you can't do that way, but that's the majority of what I, what I do on that. And that kind of gives that a, a painting effect to it in certain aspects on it. Um, oh, Commissioner Amundsen? Right. <clears throat> How long have you been doing this? Um, I got my first camera when I was in sixth grade, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> I have a lot of cameras sitting in storage now. <laughs> uh, 35 millimeter, millimeter, millimeters kind of gone to the wayside a little bit there. Um, I did a lot of sports photography, a lot of portraits. Um, I just kind of got more on the artistic side of it about five years ago, um, where I kind of moved from different photography to landscapes, architecture. Uh, right now, I'm kind of doing some glass things right now. I just kind of move around different aspects of it. I don't do a whole lot of people port portraiture anymore than that. Um, I'm not saying I don't ever do it, but most of it's in our artistic side of it in there. But uh, I did have a full dark room set up when I was younger, and I actually managed to sell that off to the side just before digital came along in there, which was a good, good move, I guess you might say. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I do spend a lot of time in my uh, non-career hours uh, doing this. I'm either out shooting something or processing or developing my website. And it's, it's basically a second career almost, you might say, on that. So, questions? Do you have a favorite location in Lancaster County? You've been at it a long time. Um, there's two, two spots I, I spend a lot of time at. One is sitting in Sunken Gardens. Mm -hmm. um, I do a lot of what you might call really long exposures out there. Um, some of them go up to 15 minutes with the uh, cameras going there. Actually, I had an encounter with a police officer. One time I was out there a little after hours, I didn't realize it, and he came up, flashlight right in my camera. <laughs> um, luckily, long exposure didn't really do, do a whole lot to it. Uh, I guess the other part of it's uh, I'm always out of Pioneer's Park, too. There's some aspects, uh, places out there, the, the pillars and, and the, the duck pond, you might say, um, different times of year. I know you saw, saw the buffalo picture out there if you're walking through there. Um, I just kind of shoot kind of the same things different times a year, different aspects, and it's just uh, I kind of see in my head if I can do things similar but different, you know, type of thing. But th those are probably two two biggest places I like to go and shoot. So Sun Gardens, I've spent a lot of time there shooting different aspects and uh, uh, the, uh, the pergola and just uh, at night, mostly night shots and things like that. So out there. Well, your work is beautiful, and well, it's you. a real joy for us to be able to <clears throat> see you. it every day. It was a three-month exhibit, and then uh, it seems like it started yesterday. And, and you know, I got a it's ending this month, so I'll we'll have another artist in there uh, first of next month, and uh, or first of March, I should say. Um, but it's been a pleasure, and I appreciate you guys allowing me to display inside inside the city county building. It's been very very nice. Thank you. Thank you. It's Thank been you. a very welcome addition, mm -hmm. even though it's been temporary. <laughs> You've enjoyed it. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thanks, guys. <coughs> Next is the County Sheriff 2018 Employee Recognition Awards, and this includes Sheriff, the Citizen Certificate of Merit, Corey Gustafson, Jerry Plavica, and Timothy Miller, Civilian Employee of the Year, Court Officer Mark Booth, Honorable Discharge, Deputy Sheriff Craig Schneider, Life-saving awards, Deputy Sheriff James Rourke and Deputy Sheriff Barry Barnett, and Gallantry Star, Deputies Rhonda Wicht and Michael Hansen. Good morning, Terry Wagner, Lancaster County Sheriff. Um, first off, thanks for, for indulging us and allowing us to make these presentations in a public forum. It's, uh, it's really special to do that, and it means a lot to, to everybody involved. Every year, our, our employee uh, awards committee uh, reviews nominations for various awards that we present within the sheriff's office and uh, <clears throat> we, we make those decisions based upon the, the policies that we have and the criteria for those awards. 
So uh, first off, uh, we have the Citizens Certificate of Merit uh, from Mr. Corey Gustafson, Jerry Polifka, and Timothy Miller. If you gentlemen would come forward. On May 30th, uh, 2017, at about 8.23 p.m., a motorcyclist ran off Highway 79 just south of Agnew Road. Uh, the 59-year-old driver was down a very deep ditch. He was unresponsive. He was in critical condition and struggling to live. <clears throat> because of the time of day and location of the driver, most motorists would not have seen him in that ditch. A very alert Corey Gufterson spotted the motorcycle and then the driver and stopped to render aid and called 911. Uh, the driver was having difficulty breathing and then stopped breathing altogether. Uh, Jerry uh, Polifka stopped by and began CPR on the driver until he was breathing on his own. Uh, Timothy Miller, who is a nurse practitioner, uh, I had in the uh, letter a doctor, but he's a nurse practitioner, provided care for the driver until emergency responders arrived some 15 minutes after the uh, call was, uh, was made. Uh, there is no doubt that the actions of these three men saved the life of that motorcycle driver we appreciate their willingness to get involved and to, uh, and to help their fellow man. And for that, uh, we have certificates for them. <coughs> Much appreciate it. We also have lapel uh, pins for each of them that I forgot, so uh, <laughs> Captain Vehicle passed so sad. Our civilian officer, uh, a, a civilian employee of the year, uh, Court Officer Mark Booth. Mark? Mark Booth has been with the Sheriff's Office for 31 years. Uh, he, an excerpt from the nomination letter for him said that Mark continues to be someone that I could not effectively do my job without. He performs by far the most prisoner transports in the division, and is my go-to guy when I need to have something done. He conducts prisoner transports efficiently with little or no direction, but more importantly, he does them safely. Mark knows how the court process works and how the prisoner transports will fit into the daily business. Therefore, he's often able to identify potential problems before they arise. Mark rarely takes a day off and he doesn't abuse his sick leave. His work within the division is underappreciated by many, but not by me. Mark's positive attitude, his superior work ethic, and his institutional knowledge of our office makes him well-deserving of being our Civilian Employee of the Year. Mark, congratulations. <laughs> for our uniformed employees, we also have a, a, a bar for them to wear on their uniform and a, a plaque to hang on their wall. Thank you, Mark. You want to say anything? Okay. <laughs> you. I'm sorry, Mark, did were you asked if you wanted to say a few words and you said no thank you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you would like, is there anyone here you'd like to introduce? Or? Mark always uh you want to introduce anybody, your family, Mark or I'm good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he generally <clears throat> ends everything with sir because Mark was a Marine and so he's uh he's still very much a Marine. Awesome. Honorable discharge uh for Deputy Sheriff Craig Schneider. Craig? Craig retired on January 3rd of this year, having served the citizens of Lancaster County for about 40 and a half years. Uh, we appreciate his service and wish him well in his retirement. Uh, the Schneider legacy continues, however. His son Jason's been a deputy sheriff for four years, and his other son Jeffrey just began his career as a deputy sheriff a month ago, both with Lancaster County. So we uh, want to appreciate and acknowledge Craig's uh, service to Lancaster County and thank him for his over 40 years of service. My wife in the back row, the pretty young redhead back there, she was with me the whole way, and thank goodness she's put up with me for 40 years in this job. It's been a heck of a ride, and I enjoyed every minute of it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for your service. James? Our life-saving award, um, we have a, a couple of these. Uh, the first one is to Deputy Sheriff James Rourke. On December 5th, uh, 2017, Deputy Rourke was um, at the uh, bridge, which is the Behavioral Health Center, completing his reports from an earlier call for service. 
The bridge staff uh, were conducting safety checks on the residents and, and discovered a 56, or I'm sorry, a 36 year old man unresponsive with no pulse or respiration. The man had been brought to the bridge with a high blood alcohol content and suspected methamphetamine use. <coughs> after, radiate, re, after radioing for medical units, uh, James stopped, started, um, took over chest compressions from the bridge staff. The man began breathing on his own and James stopped chest compressions. Then he checked for a pulse when the man became unresponsive again. James continued with chest compressions and the victim continued to try and breathe on his own while starting to have a pulse until uh, Lincoln Fire arrived and transported the victim to the hospital. The victim survived this medical episode thanks to James' quick action. Thank you, James. Appreciate it. And this is our life-saving award. It's a uh, uh, uniform bar and a, and a uh, medal, and then a, a plaque for James's wall. Thank you again. Thank you, sir. Appreciate sure to say a few words. Yeah, absolutely. Um, County Board, thank you very much for having me here. It's, a, it's an honor uh, to be here. Um, I work with a, a lot of great deputies that do a lot of great things from catching bad guys to, to saving lives and I'm just I'm glad I was uh, uh, able to be there that day for this particular incident so um, I really appreciate the support from Sheriff Wagner and uh, Chief Chief Duncan and uh, Captain Brookhauser and, uh, all of my chain of command and the deputies I work with and, um, especially really appreciate my beautiful wife Kathleen and my beautiful children Ella um, and that's little Nixon down there. So, <laughs> so thanks very much for having me. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Thought <laughs> in his nervousness, James was going to forget his wife, but he didn't. So, good job. <laughs> uh, Deputy Sheriff of the Year, uh, Life Saving Award and Meritorious Service Award for Deputy Sheriff Barry Barnett. Barry? <clears throat> On March 15, 2017, at 7.15 uh, in the morning, uh, Deputy Barnett was on his way home uh, after his normal shift southbound on 9th Street. Uh, Deputy Barnett noticed smoke in the area and was waved down by a citizen at D Street, alerting him to a fire at the corner house. Uh, Barry discovered the fire on the east side of the house uh, at the exterior and only stairwell to the upper floors of the apartment. He notified dispatch of the fire so that uh, Lincoln Fire could be detailed and grabbed his fire extinguisher to attempt to control the fire. He also radioed uh, to the sheriff's office knowing that there were deputies four blocks away who could bring their fire extinguishers and as it was shift change and the whole shift was uh, at the office. So the other deputies uh, brought their fire extinguishers to the scene also. Uh, because of the uh, use of those fire extinguishers, uh, it allowed uh, Barry to knock that fire down on that stairwell, allowing him to gain access to the upper apartment of the house where a family of nine were trapped. Other deputies, LPD officers, and pastors by assisted in climbing onto the roof of the porch, getting the family onto the roof and then lowered to the ground. But for the quick thinking of Deputy Barnett of getting additional fire, uh, fire extinguishers to the scene to slow down the fire, members of the Garcia family might not have made it out of that upstairs apartment. On May 19th, 2017, at about uh, 9.24 p.m., Deputy Barnett had just finished assisting with uh, the Citizens Academy and was on his way home. He heard a medical call come out on the radio, sending units to a 45-year-old female who was not breathing. The call was in the Southwood neighborhood, and Barry knew he was only four blocks away, uh, so he notified dispatch that he would also be en route to the call. Uh, Barry took over chest compressions from the victim's husband until LFR arrived. Uh, the fire department used an uh, AED while Barry continued compressions and LFR set up their Lucas chest compression machine. Although the victim did not survive this cardiac event, her family knew all that could have been done had been done. Barry Barnett has also volunteered to assist LPD with their Citizens Academy to help bring a rural law enforcement perspective. Barry put in a lot of time apart and aside from his normal shift to help make that uh, academy success. He has received many accolades over his almost 16-year career. He was named Deputy Sheriff of the Year in 2009 for his performance the previous year 
and he received the Life Saving Award in both 2011 and 2015. Barry is a 1997 graduate of Lincoln High School and attended Southeast Community College. He and his wife Janice have two children, Eddie and Coco, age nine. Barry, congratulations. There are three separate plaques, Deputy Sheriff of the Year, Meritorious Service, and Life Saving, so he'll take those with us as he leaves. Barry? Um, first off, I uh, just want to thank the County Board. Uh, one of the big things is two of these awards were achieved due to having a take-home cruiser. I was on my way home on two of these occasions, and you know you can't put a price on, on helping people. Um, and we're always available on the way to work, from work, so thank you for allowing that, Sheriff. Thank you for allowing that as well. Um, I'd also like to thank my wife, Janice, my son, Eddie, my daughter, Coco. My parents are here, my mom, Connie, and I'm going to throw this out there, my beautiful dad, Jerry. <laughs> um, but uh, one of the other big things, too, is w when this house fire happened, um, I had my fire extinguisher, got the fire knocked down. And then what? I'm, I'm just sitting there. And so I thought, call, have everybody else come. And when I heard sirens of the people that I work with coming, it was the biggest relief and I knew we had a chance. So it, it, it's just a great thing to see how we all work together. Um, also with the uh, civilians that were there as well. Nobody cared who was what, where we come from, or anything like that, background, nothing. We all worked together and, and got these people out. So um, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody. Thanks, Bert. Thank you. Last and not, but not least, uh, Deputies Rhonda Wick and Michael Hansen. Uh, the Gallantry Star is the second highest award for bravery presented by our office, and it's for an act of uh, distinguished valor in the, in the felonious arrest of an armed adversary who is a major threat to the welfare of the community and to the and or the deputies. On September 28, 2017, at about 2.55 p.m., uh, Deputy Sheriff Rhonda Wicht and Michael Hansen were attempting to locate a 35-year-old man for the purpose of taking him into custody on a mental health warrant. The man is known to have suffered a traumatic brain injury, post-traumatic stress disorder, and at the time had to carry a concealed weapons permit. As the deputies were knocking on the suspect's door, he approached them from behind carrying a rifle case and a backpack pushing his way past the deputies while trying to unlock his apartment door and then ordering the deputies to leave. As the deputies attempted to prevent the suspect from entering the apartment, he tried to pull away, pulling all three of them into the entryway of the apartment. Uh, Deputy Hansen observed the suspect reaching uh, into his waistband to remove a pistol. Uh, Deputy Wick got to the suspect's right side to control his gun hand. Uh, after the suspect slammed Deputy Wick into the wall, he was successful in pulling his pistol from its holster. As he was pointing his pistol at Deputy Wick, uh, Deputy Hansen pulled the suspect's left arm across his body and braced it against the wall and was able to draw his own pistol pointing at the suspect's chest while ordering him to stop resisting arrest. I'm sorry, while ordering him to put his weapon down. The suspect dropped his weapon the second time he was ordered to do so and, and, uh, but was still resisting arrest. Uh, Deputies Wick and Hansen continued to struggle and two L until two LPD officers uh, arrived at which time the suspect was finally restrained and taken into custody. Uh, two knives were also seized from the suspect. Uh, Deputy Hansen would have been justified in shooting the suspect when he threatened Deputy Wick, although their close proximity would have made injury to Deputy Wick a strong possibility. Instead, the suspect finally dropped the weapon when ordered to do so, knowing Deputy Hansen was prepared to defend his partner <clears throat> and himself, thus preventing loss of life to anyone involved. Uh, Deputy Wick is a 14-year veteran of the Sheriff's Office assigned to our patrol division. Uh, Deputy Hansen is a 10-year veteran assigned to patrol and a member of our tactical response unit. Mike. This is our gallantry star uh, for bravery for both these deputies. Thank you. Any words of wisdom? <laughs> well, 
I guess uh, for those of you that actually know me pretty well in this room, you'd probably be surprised that I'm kind of short on words today. So I just want to say thank you and I appreciate all the support. I'll let Mike take it over. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, again, thank you so much for having us today. It means a lot to us. And uh, I want to make sure that Rhonda's recognized again for what she did that day. Uh, she actually suffered an injury uh, during that fight and uh, fought through it and uh, showed a lot of courage and stayed very composed in a, in a situation that lasted probably 10 minutes. And uh, it was, it was uh, very chaotic. And I want to make sure that LPD is recognized too. The, the two uh, officers that showed up first were the the, I mean, that was a, a huge relief to both of us when they came through the door to, to help us out. So we work pretty closely with LPD, and uh, we respect them uh, as much as any other organization. <coughs> and uh, I love working for LSO. I love everyone I work with, um, everybody, including Rhonda, uh, who was my FTO, by the way, uh, is just uh, top notch from the sheriff on down. And uh, I can't imagine a, a better place to work for. Thank you. Oh, hold on one second. Uh, my <laughs> wife and family are sitting out there. <laughs> that's Amanda, Jacob, Judd, Luke, and Mary. Yep, that's Judd waving. Uh, Amanda is, uh, you know, I come home with these crazy stories, and she's, uh, she's a rock and uh, has been a very supportive of my job. Uh, I have other family in the, in, the, in the audience, too, and they've been extremely supportive, and uh, I really appreciate them and love them very much. Thank you. Well, I thank you again for allowing us to make these presentations, uh, and I think that you can see it's critically important uh, that the support of the families for the deputies involved in these incidents is critical, um, especially when they've been involved in a traumatic event. At the end of the day, it's not like just coming home from the office. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a bit different uh, when you come down off that uh, adrenaline dump that, that happens uh, in this line of work. So I really appreciate all of the family members being here supporting the deputies in their, in their work, and I, I really appreciate the work that they do, and they, they really do make a difference every day. Thank you. Well said, Sheriff. Mm -hmm. um, Commissioner Amundsen. Yeah, well, thank you, Terry, for bringing them forward. <clears throat> I also really wanted to say that <clears throat> these are great examples of the type of um, security, uh, the safety aspect, the work that the um, LSO office does, and the citizens of both Lancaster County as well as Lincoln can be, can rest assured that uh, they're being well taken care of. These are just great examples of um, humanitarian service, Good Samaritan service, uh, bravery, gallantry, and so forth. And I really, uh, this is super. Thanks so much for what you do. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming up. Next is new business, 4A, a setting a salary of Ryan, for Ryan Decker, <laughs> Deputy County Attorney, in the amount of $68,001.44 as Attorney 1, effective February 20th, 2018. Good, member, good morning, members of the board. Um, I'm Pat Condon. I'm Chief Deputy, Lancaster County Attorney. I'm here uh, asking approval for the setting of the salary for Mr. Decker at uh, $68,001.44. That is a step three. Um, for that, uh, he is to begin working February 20th. Um, we are asking for the step three, uh, to start him at step three. 
Uh, Mr. Decker has been in practice with the uh, Black Hawk County uh, Sheriff's Office in, in Waterloo, Iowa for five and a half years. He has uh, 37 jury trials on 100 other non-jury uh, trials and, and uh, think that he, he deserves that starting salary. Um, we have uh, interviewed him a couple times. I think he'll be a great addition to our office. So, have any questions? Any questions for Mr. Condon? I will move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to uh, <coughs> set the salary for Ryan Decker. Um, any discussion? Uh, please call the roll. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Avery? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. Thank you. Thanks. B is setting a salary for Diane Hughes, bailiff for Jud Judge John Colburn in the amount of $63,555, effective February 1st, 2018. Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to set the salary for Diane Hughes. Uh, any discussion? Uh, please call the roll. Amundsen? Yes. Avery? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Shore? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. C is public employee retirement plan and report for the Lan for Lancaster County, Nebraska 401A employees retirement plan for the plan year ending December 31st, 2017. Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the public employer retirement plan and a report. Uh, any discussion? Please call the roll. Amundsen? Yes. Shore? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Avery? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. D is a memorandum of understanding between Fraternal Order of Police Lodge number 32 in the County of Lancaster, Nebraska to continue a policy governing the granting and denial of vacation leave, compensatory time, and holiday leave. The leave policy shall be in effect from February 1st, 2018 through August 31st, 2018. Good morning, Brad Johnson, Director of the Lancaster County Department of Corrections. So about six months ago, uh, we came to you guys with a, a memorandum of understanding with the officers union to uh, for a pilot period on uh, a procedure to address vacation leave and uh, leave requests on their behalf uh, that was different than what we've done in the past and what was in the contract at that, that time. Uh, this system that was developed between, with our LMC Labor Management Committee between the administration of the jail and the leadership of the union basically creates uh, for lack of a better term, a formula of how, how many folks we're going to let, let off per shift uh, so that there's a little bit more of an uh, un, uh, understandable method. The, the term before in, in the contract basically just stated that uh, we could not unreasonably de deny leave, which created uh, you know, a lot of confusion and misunderstandings because everybody's uh, perception of reasonableness was different. Uh, so we're, we're here to, to extend that, to be quite, quite honest. Uh, we started working, we modified the language just a little bit to kind of clarify a few, few things, but the fun, fundamentals are the same. And uh, you know, we started about two weeks ago <coughs> looking at uh, what, if, if we wanted to continue with this or not. I think everybody's in agreement that uh, it's worked very, very well and we want to continue. Uh, we thought we had until the end of next month, to be honest, and we found out that we only had like two weeks before it expired. So uh, working with the county attorney's office and the union attorney, we decided that the best option right now is just to extend uh, the memorandum uh, through uh, August because we have negotiations this, this year with the union again. So we'll just kind of fold this into those negotiations and uh, either build it into the con contract or set it up in, in our policy or you know whatever works out in negotiation wise. So uh, I know that the union has uh, their vote on it uh, this eve evening. So uh, hope hopefully they feel the same way we do and the what the le leadership's telling me that they do. If if they vote to approve it and you guys vote here to to uh, approve it will continue on basically as we have for the last six months any questions for mr johnson appreciate the <clears throat> explanation and we'll move approval second 
Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the memorandum of understanding <coughs> with the Fraternal Order of Police Lodge 32. Uh, any discussion? Uh, please call the roll. Shore? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Avery? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. Thank you. E is an amendment to kind of contract C-15-62 with CBM Managed Services for Correctional Food and Commissary Services. The cost will be increased 1.6% per meal for the remainder of the contract term. The increase is based on the Midwest Consumer Price Index for food away from home. Move Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to amend the contract with CBM Managed Service Services. Um, any discussion? Please call the roll. Brinkman? Yes. Avery? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Shore? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. F is a recommendation from the purchasing department and the county sheriff to award a sole source contract for camera systems and software to Vigilant Solutions, LLC. The total amount of the order is $35,515. Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the contract with uh, Vigilant Solutions, LLC. Um, any discussion? Uh, please call the roll. Avery? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Shore? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. 4G is a recommendation from the purchasing department and the county sheriff to award a purchase order to Bisco Technologies for Panasonic laptops. The total amount is $31,979.25. Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to uh, approve the contract with Bisco Technologies. Uh, any discussion? Please call the roll. Amundsen? Yes. Brinkman? <clears throat> yes. Avery? Yes. Shore? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. H is a recommendation from the purchasing department and records and infor information management to award a purchase order to Gene Steffi Chrysler Jeep Dodge for the purchase of a Dodge Ram Pro Promaster cargo van using the state of Nebraska contract number 148720OC. The cost of county is $20,879. Move, <coughs> move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to award a purchase order um, to Gene Steffi Chrysler Jeep Dodge. Um, any discussion? Uh, please call the roll. Avery? Yes. Shore? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. <clears throat> Fort I is an agreement with connecting links to provide substance use evaluation services for community corrections. The county will pay up to $150 per participant and $160 per participant if the participant is in custody should the participant not pay within 30 days. The term of the contract is July 1st, 2017 through June 30th, 2018, and will renew and automatically renew for an additional one-year term. Kim Atherton, uh, Director of Lancaster County <coughs> Corrections. Um, Excuse me. I'm here today because this contract is um, quite delayed in getting signed. We had a number of uh, glitches in the system, including some changes that were made by the contractor without discussing them with me. So we've worked through those issues. Um, then we had to work through, th through some insurance certificate issues, but I think we're good um, and we're ready to move forward. Okay. Any questions from Ms. Etherton? Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the agreement with Connecting Links. Um, any discussion? Uh, please call the roll. Brinkman? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Shore? Yes. Avery? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. J is an amendment, is amendment two to county contract C-16-445 subaward agreement with the state of Nebraska Department of Health and Human Services, services for child support enforcement services provided by the Lancaster County Attorney's Office. The purpose of the amendment is to update the language related to the use of federal tax information and to eliminate payments for collection of medical reimbursements that are not allowed as a four, as a four D activity. Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to amend mm. the contract with the Nebraska Department of Health and Human Services. Uh, any discussion? Please call the roll. Shore. Yes. Avery. Yes. Amundsen. Yes. Brinkman. Yes. Wilton. <clears throat> yes. Motion carries five to zero. 
Floor K are contracts with the following to provide the annual supply of turf fertilizer and chemicals. The terms of the contracts are March 6, 2018 through March 7, 2019. This is for Crop Production Services, Inc. in, the amount, in an amount not to exceed $9,632.40 and Helena Chemical Company in amount not to exceed $1,375.30. Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve two contracts um, to provide the annual supply of turf fertilizer and chemicals. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Avery? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. L has a contract with Rochester Armored Car to provide annual armored car services. The term of the contract is four years beginning February 1st, 2018 with the option to renew for, renew for one additional four year term. The cost of the county is not to exceed $60,000. Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the contract with Rochester Armored Car. Um, any discussion? Please call the roll. Brinkman? Yes. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Avery? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries 5 to 0. M is an amendment to kind of contract C 13 549 with company care for employee medical exams. The amendment extends a contract for an additional three months for an additional three month term beginning February 4th, 2018 through May 3rd, 2018. The cost of county is not to exceed $4,500. Move approval. Second. Okay, uh, we have a motion and a second to approve the amended contract with company care. Any discussion? Uh, please call the roll. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Avery? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries 5 to 0. Four N is an amendment to county contract C 17 927 with Kerasoft using the state of Utah NASPO value point contract for the Cloud Solutions Qualtrics Research <clears throat> Suite. The amendment changes the contract term to February 1st, 2018 through January 31st, 2019. Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to amend the contract with Carhartt, or Carasoft, excuse me. Um, any discussion? Uh, please call the roll. Amundsen? Yes. Avery? Yes. <clears throat> Brinkman? Yes. Shore? Yes. Wilchin. Yes. Motion carries five to zero. Four O are minimums to the following contracts for and requirements of pumping, hauling, and disposal services for liquid waste products. The amendments extend the contracts for an additional one month term beginning February third, two thousand eighteen through March second, two thousand eighteen. The cost of county is not to exceed <clears throat> five hundred dollars, and this includes county contract C thirteen four forty eight with a first rate uh, pumping service inc and county contract c-13-449 with tan air inc move approval second hey we have a motion and a second to amend the contracts for the pumping hauling and disposal services just a question there's a lot of these who are extending just for one month and we'll be back doing the same thing again i'm just kind of curious why sharon Mulder, assistant purchasing agent this one was out for a bid it just happened um, to close and we needed some additional time to make sure that the contract we get the insurance and the contracts are signed and executed okay. and that's probably what is going on with the insurance um, requirements the new ones it is taking our vendors much longer to get us the paperwork great thank you thank you any questions for purchasing okay um, <clears throat> please call the roll Avery yes Brinkman yes Shore yes Amundsen? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries 5 to 0. P is an amendment to kind of contract C 10 317 with correctional health care companies for medical services for the Youth Services Center. The amendment extends a contract from February 1st, 2018 through April 30th, 2018. The cost of the county is not to exceed $60,000. Sharon Mulder again. Um, this one is being extended due to the fact that they had it out for a bid and didn't get any bidders, and so they're revamping the RFP in order to get it out again. Any questions for purchasing? Okay. Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to amend the contract <coughs> with correctional health care companies. Um, any discussion? 
Please call the roll. Brinkman? Yes. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Avery? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. Q is an amendment to county contract C 11 252 with Correct Care Solutions LLC for health care services for the adult detention facility. The amendment extends a contract from February 1st, 2018 through February 28th, 2018. The cost of county is not to exceed $180,000. Again, this one, they just needed an additional month to get the new contract um, executed and get all the, the paperwork. Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to amend the county contract with Correct Care Solutions. Uh, any discussion? Please call the roll. Shore? Yes. Hamilton? Yes. Avery? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. R is an amendment to county contract C 15 119 with K2 construction for the annual requirements of county snow removal truck mounted plow services. The amendment renews the contract for an additional one year term beginning March 10th, 2018 through March 9th, 2019. The cost of county is not to exceed $10,000. Move approval. Second. second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to amend the contract with K2 Construction. Uh, any discussion? Uh, please call the roll. Amundsen? Yes. Avery? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Shore? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. S is a contract with Lincoln Fire and Rescue for the specialized medical care of general assistance clients. The provider will be reimbursed at the Medicaid rate. Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the contract with Lincoln Fire and Rescue. Any discussion? Uh, please call the roll. Amundsen? Yes. Shore? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Avery? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. Number five are consent items, right away contracts with the following. Ronald and Judine Oling, Southwest 2nd Street and West Whitcirk Road in amount of $478, or excuse me, $748. Oling Family Roca, LLC, Southwest 2nd Street and West Whitcirk Road in amount of $748. Setting a public hearing on Tuesday, February 6, 2018 at 9 a.m. in Room 112 of the County State Building regarding the proposed sale of property generally located at 2202 South 11th Street in the city of Lincoln, Lancaster County, Nebraska, which includes declaring that the property no longer serves a county purpose, determining fair market value, and sending the date for sale of the property. Move approval of the consent items. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the consent items. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Sure. Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Avery? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. Number six is public comment. Those wishing to speak on items relating to county business, not on the agenda, may do so at this time. Okay. Anyone in the audience wishing to speak on an item not on the agenda? Okay. Please come forward. Good morning. Good morning. Rick DeBoer, AFSCME 2468 Union President. I had intended, along with a lot of our, my coworkers, to be here last week because that's when you had the motion to approve the AFSCME engineer contract. Um, and though we were going to be able to discuss it a little bit more as a motion, we were a little bit busy last week pushing snow and making the county road safe. So we did show up this week, um, but it had to be under the public comment. So that's what I'm here today about regarding that. I did have it a little bit longer for the motion, but I did condense it down a little bit because of the public comment. So if I go over a minute or two, I hope that's okay. Back in March, long before negotiations ever started, you each received a letter from me on what AFSCME was hoping to change in negotiations for the 2017-2018 contract. In that letter dated back in March, AFSCME specifically mentioned that one of our goals was to try to get equal benefits between the represented and unrepresented within the same department. 
For example, the unrepresented receive PEP, a frozen longevity plan, three full personal holidays. The represented no longer receive these benefits, even though it was the union, not the unrepresented, that fought for and negotiated these items. In that letter, we brought to your attention that the morale in the engineering department was very low at the time, and not receiving the same benefits as the unrepresented make the represented class feel less valued as an employee. In negotiations this year, we tried to get those benefits back, and it was explained to us that they were not comparable. To our response was, we use the same array. If they're not comparable for us, why are they comparable for others? However, no, longer, no matter how hard we pushed and continued to try to fight to get equal benefits, we finally were plainly told to forget about those benefits. You aren't going to get those back and the commissioners have no intention of ever giving those back. Now, for the contract we agreed to, a 1.5% raise. That's only because the board shot down our 2.5% raise, our 2.5% um, proposal, the same amount that the unrepresented had received. So we brought a 2% to you, thinking that was going to be good because that's the board themselves gave themselves a 2% raise. That wasn't accepted either. It was countered with a 1.3. We are already four or five months past the start of the contract. And so we decided to settle for the 1.5. Lancaster County has great employees. However, it's no secret that Discontent employees are not productive employees. It was recently brought to our attention <clears throat> that on July 21st, 2011, at a staff meeting in Waverly, there was a motion made by the county board to treat the board, excuse me, motion made by the county board to treat the unrepresented the same in wages and benefits as the represented. The motion passed five to zero. I would like to read that, and I do have copies if you'd like to follow along, otherwise um, I would be happy to give them to you afterwards. Hire moved and Raybould seconded to treat the classified unrepresented employees, C and X, the same as employees represented by American Federation of State and County and Municipal Employees, asked me, in terms of wages and benefits. Raybolt, Heyer, Hutkins, Smoyer, and Shore voted aye. Motion carried five to zero. Now we realize that the board faces have changed. There's only one current board member and a chief administrator officer that that were presently serving at that time. However, I understand that has been a long time ago. And so that's why I'm bringing this back to light. So we're wanting to know what happened. Did someone drop the ball or was this motion never intended to be carried out? And again, I understand how this motion is made, how it reads, uh, and it's regarding the unrepresented. And you, as you look closer at that, you will figure that out. But I think it was the intention of the board to try to treat everybody equal. Recently, I think it was the county attorneys, one was at comparability, one, one was not at comparability. However, you raised the one out of comparability to try to make it fair between the two because that's what the county board does. They make the benefits the same. So, um, next year, Ask Me is planning on doing a full comprehensive study on where we stand with the benefit and wages for each employee. We would like to invite the county to join us in this comprehensive study. 
It hasn't been that long ago when the county and the union did joint studies together. That way everybody knew exactly where they stood and there weren't any surprises. However, for now, we understand this was only a one-year contract and back in, in June of this year, we will be back at the table again. But now that some of these things have been brought to light, we can all move forward from here and make this even a greater county than it already is. Thank you, board, for your service. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. DeBoer, for yeah, taking the time <clears throat> to join us this morning. Anyone else in the audience wishing to make a statement? <clears throat> Rick, are you supposed to sign this? You didn't. You're fine, Rick. Yeah, we, we, we know who Rick is. <laughs> okay. But you can go ahead and fill out your... Yeah. Don't matter to me. Um, most of you probably don't know me. I'm Melvin Moore. I used to be the union president uh, about 10 years ago. And uh, <clears throat> like I said, most of you don't know. I know that. But <clears throat> today I want to address Pep. Uh, Pep has never been comparable, even when it was brought to us uh, years ago. Uh, the union actually brought it to us. Uh, we always wanted something like it, but we had no idea how to get it what it was and of course we liked it and uh, I believe we paid for all of it to begin with and of course the unrepresented got the same thing we did and then we I believe paid for half of it and then we finally negotiated where the county paid for all of it um, now the way it is now like I said it's never been comparable ever and it's not comparable now. It's not comparable for the union people. It's not comparable for all the people getting it. Um, frankly, I don't care if the taxpayers pay for uh, PEP, whether it's comparable or not, but everybody should get it, not just the people who's making more money. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> you have people that uh, are making probably two or three times more than the average county worker. Um, well, for instance, you have uh, Terry Wagner, a good man, definitely worth his money, but uh, Pep isn't comparable for him. Uh, you have uh, appointed people like uh, uh, Shelley out there at Juvenile, uh, nice, nice woman, uh, worth her money, but Pep isn't comparable. Uh, you have your own uh, man there, Mr. Egan, one of the higher paid people in the county, he gets PEP, uh, it's not comparable. Uh, you yourself, you're, you guys uh, giving yourselves PEP and it isn't comparable, uh, but the little guy isn't getting it. And uh, something's dreadfully wrong. The only people not getting PEP is old union that asked me, uh, they're broke all up now, but. Those are the only people not getting PEP other than corrections, and they never negotiated for whatever reason. Um, and, of course, even the sheriff's union uh, is getting it, which is fine. I want everybody to get it, like I said. I want you folks to get it. But uh, everybody should either not get it because it's not comparable, or everybody should get it, uh, the little guy and the big guy. Um, I don't know. There was a lot of... I guess I call it hate and bitterness from the manner of thing. And I think the old board was uh, kind of just not doing right by the people back then. But uh, all you people are new faces. And I don't think you people are really, uh, I don't think you have an in for anybody. I think you're all good people. But. Um, It's what you people do can be no better than the intel, the information you receive. Now, I don't know who advises you people. I seriously doubt whether you people really were brought up to speed on the whole matter thing. 
I don't think any of you people probably want to be paying the high-priced people pep and not give it to the little people. I, I really can't believe that. Uh, Rick even offered to uh, have the people uh, and asked me buy their own pep. And they were told, as I understand, that uh, the board wasn't interested in that. Now, why the board wouldn't be interested in letting the people buy their own pep, uh, I have no idea. Uh, but something needs to be addressed here. As a taxpayer, I don't care if you pay everybody pep. Uh, I'm glad with that. But it needs to be done all one way or the other. Either everybody buys their own pep or nobody buys their own pep. And uh, I don't know who advises you people. I'm not blaming you people. Uh, most of you people are, haven't been there that long and I haven't heard anything bad about you, you know. But uh, so I have confidence that you will address the problem and, and take care of it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Avery. I have a question, sir. Yes. And I'm certainly glad to see you talking. The old board wouldn't talk to me. <laughs> Uh, isn't it true that the union, once they get a proposal, final proposal from the negotiating team, isn't it true that you all discuss it and vote on it to approve or not to approve? You mean does it have to go back to a general board? It goes back to the union. Um, once you get a final proposal, sir? A what? A once, valid? You get a, once you get a final best offer or once you get any proposal? Once you get an agreement between the negotiators. Once you, get an actual, is, once you get an actual agreement, it has to be voted on by the general membership right. before it, uh, the union agrees to it, yes. And did that happen in, on this contract? I have no idea, sir. Uh, I've been out of the union and haven't worked for the county for 10 years. Um, but to answer your question, uh, if I'm understanding it correctly, uh, I believe, uh, no, legally, do they have to? I'm not sure. I always did. But uh, to be real honest with you, I don't know if I ever run that question by an attorney. I always did, but I don't know if, for sure if you have to. Well, I know that we don't approve or disapprove of any contract with the unions until they voted on it and brought it to us for approval. So... I'm trying to figure out, did we make a mistake somewhere in the negotiations? Well, if you bring a last best offer to the table, uh, and I speak from 10 years ago, sir, so bear that in mind. But if I got a last best offer from the county, I would certainly assume that the board has passed it. I would think that that would be quite high-handed of your negotiating team to do such a thing if they have not taken it back to the board. Uh, I've always been rather suspicious of whether they really kept you folks informed as much as they should. Uh, but uh, uh, I, would, I would naturally uh, assume, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> assume that it has been approved by you folks before uh, I would ever probably consider taking it back to the people. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, anyone else in the, from the public wishing to make a statement on an uh, item not on the agenda? Well, okay. seeing none, Mr. Clerk, would you please continue? Next is number seven <coughs> announcements. The Lancaster County Board of Commissioners will hold a mid-year mid budget retreat on Thursday, February 1st, 2018 at 8.30 a.m. in the lower level of the conference room at the Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department at 3131 O Street. The Lancaster County Board of Commissioners will hold your next regular meeting on Tuesday, February 6, 2018 at 9 a.m. in Room 112 of the County City, City Building. County Commissioners can be reached at 402-441-7447 or commission at lancaster.ne.gov. The Lancaster County Board of Commissioners meeting is broadcast live on Link TV City. For the rebroadcast schedule, visit lincoln.ne.gov. Meetings are also streamed live on Link TV and can be viewed on YouTube. Move we adjourn. 
Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to adjourn. Uh, please call the roll. Brinkman? Yes. Avery? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Shore? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. We are adjourned. Have a good day. Mm -hmm.